Hey everyone, it's Dave from Digital Foundry here. So today I'm taking a look at Quantum Break on Xbox One. And at a recent Microsoft event, I managed to get a completely unrestricted playthrough of the first two chapters of the game. And curiously, the actual build at the event was labeled as Final Code. So presumably what we're seeing here should match up nicely to the uh, retail release. Well, we'll be taking a closer look at that when the game comes out. But for now, how well is the build holding up? In terms of the actual presentation itself, it's very filmic, lots of post-processing, so there's a film grain filter, depth of field, camera and object blur. Now what's interesting here is the game uses quite high quality anti-aliasing. Notice how there are very few uh, jagged edges in the presentation so far. Another thing that's worth pointing out is it's quite soft focus. We're not looking at native 1080p sharpness here. In fact, resolution is quite difficult to pin down. From what we gather, certain effects such as the uh, use of global illumination lighting and other parts of the lighting pipeline are rendered in 720p, as is the use of ambient occlusion. And that just means when these different layers interact with the geometry, they tend to uh, create a blur over the characters and scenery. However, that said, it doesn't always degrade image quality to a high degree. Take a look at the uh, texture detail for example and you can see the uh, text on background signs appear very very clean so we're not looking at the standard 720p upscale blur here. On top of that there are a lot of other things that impress. The character modelling for example is extremely well done. Basically we've got real actors which are fully scanned and there's a complete performance capture. So skin shaders, materials, all designed to look as realistic as possible. And that definitely shows in terms of the uh, quality of the animation and indeed the lip syncing. Elsewhere though, and Quantum Break is a mixture of technical extravagance and compromises. We see extensive use of volumetric lighting throughout the game, but this is rendered in a very low resolution. So we often see jagged edges around light shafts and softening of a characters and other objects that appear in these elements path. Shadow quality and draw distance is another bugbear. Shadows take on an extremely low resolution look and they constantly jitter. And what makes this worse is the draw distance is only several feet away from the character. So there's a lot of shadow pop here. The same thing also goes for reflections in the game. We've got a combination of real-time and screen space variants, but both are rendered at very low resolutions. On the flip side though, the range of advanced effects on show create a very pretty looking game. One that definitely has the cinematic qualities that Remedy are looking for. Yeah. So there's a lot of advanced technology powering Quantum Break. Though there have been some compromises in order to get the game up and running on Microsoft's platform. With that being said, how does this actually translate into performance? Well, the good news is that over the first couple of hours of play, Quantum Break's gameplay generally appears to be stable. Remedy target a 30fps update here, and as you can see much of the time this target is adhered to. This opening firefight demonstrates a range of different effects. Chip damage caused by bullets hitting the pillars, multiple light sources, and post-processing. And yet all of this is going by without the action taking any kind of a dent whatsoever. And well, this is pretty much how the majority of the first couple of hours play through. My powers were growing. Now, as we venture outside, it's a slightly different story. Remedy operate using an adaptive V-Sync, so if the engine can't render a completed frame in time for the 33.33 millisecond window required for a 30fps update, well then the engine tears. In this case we actually get pockets of tearing along with small frame rate drops. Most of the time here, in this scene anyway, performance is impacted directly when we go to shoot the enemy. Notice here as we're about to take down this guard, there's spikes in latency directly when we're aiming along with tearing, and this basically has a negative impact in gameplay. It just means it's harder to shoot enemies quickly with a high degree of accuracy. Though, as we can see, once the 30 FPS cap is restored, we don't really have any problems. Ultimately, it's worth bearing in mind that this is a worst case scenario. The only other time we see performance impacted is during cutscenes, where there's an occasional stutter from time to time. But for the most part these are also locked solidly at 30 FPS and this produces a smooth cinematic experience. You might still be able to catch them. Bye. 
Now of course it is worth bearing in mind that this is just the performance for the first few hours of the game. Some of the trailers we've seen actually contain a lot more action packed set pieces and use of physics and other elements. So with that in mind we'll be interested to find out exactly how well the final game holds up in these areas. Anyway I think that about covers it for today. We'll be taking a closer look at Quantum Break in the near future when the game comes out. So make sure you stay tuned for that. As ever don't forget to like or subscribe if you enjoyed the video and until next time thanks for watching.